Hi kids, uh, now we'll be going with this revision. I tried to put them in order like kinematics, Newton's laws and stuff. But if somewhere it might have got mixed up, try to understand, right? So anyway, uh, the better way of uh, doing this is like you can pause at the question or like you'll be getting the material also, right? So you can look at the PDF and uh, you can try to solve the question. Then you can look at the solution. Even though you get the uh, answer, maybe it's better to look into the solution. Maybe sometimes it might go that way that my solution may be a little easier or sometimes it may be that your solution will be easier so just try to see the perspectives and uh, take whatever is good for you all right okay i won't be wasting any time i'll be going with the first question now the first question says a motorboat going downstream overcame a raft at a point a after 60 minutes it turned back and after some time passed the raft uh, after some time passed the raft at a distance six kilometer from the point a so now you need to find what is the uh, velocity of the river now that's the question now what does the question say is now in this particular figure uh, this is river river is flowing and uh, boat overcame the raft at this point this point is a so i am assuming there is some tree and i am observing from here so what they said after this it traveled for one hour uh, boat traveled for one hour that is boat speed will be uh, its actual speed plus river river also will try to push it right so boat speed plus boat's natural speed plus river speed into one hour i am going with like kilometer per hour so i am taking like speed into time so after one hour it is turning back and it is it is meeting meeting the raft again at some point which is at six kilometer from the initial point six kilometer from the initial point that is this distance is six kilometer and what is the total time of journey one plus t one plus t so in that 1 plus t what will be the distance traveled by the raft it will be same as river speed into 1 plus t because raft speed will be same as river speed right so this is the figure we need to draw and obviously you must be getting this boat will try to go this way river will try to push this way so uh, effective speed will be boat minus river right so now if you see the uh, yeah concentrate on these two things like equations solving is not important or uh, that can be done uh, naturally like these are the only two things we need to take care of now what is this thing this thing is this one six kilometer is the distance traveled by the raft in one plus t time now what is this equation this equation is this distance minus this distance will give me six b plus r into one minus b minus r into t that give that will give me six so these are the two equations i can get from the figure and what i did is i expanded this it turned out to be b into one minus t plus r into one plus t that equal to six but what is r into one plus t it is six so it is getting cancelled it is getting cancelled like maybe magically so from there i can see like b into one minus t must be equal to zero or b is anyway not zero so one minus t is zero so t equal to one so that is something like oh uh, yeah oh uh, something looking good right because it is taking one hour to go forward it is taking one hour to come backward right so anyway t equal to one so if you substitute t equal to one here then you will be getting r equal to three r equal to three now that's that's how it looks when you solve from ground frame right you are solving from ground frame you are observing from frame uh, in which tree is at rest now i will try to solve the same question from raft frame from raft frame that is I am shifting my position from. I am shifting my position from here to raft. Now, in raft frame, what will happen? Tree will have velocity r in this direction. Actually, raft will have velocity r in this direction. But when I observe from raft, tree will have velocity r in this direction. But boat, boat will have velocity only b. Natural, it's natural speed only because river velocity won't be playing any role because you are observing from river, right? So, with respect to raft, boat will have same speed while going downstream or while coming upstream so if it is taking one hour to go forward it will take one hour to come backward also because distance is same and speed is same so from here i can easily conclude the total time of journey is two hours so in two hours what is the distance between tree and man according to the previous figure according to the previous figure you can understand like the distance between the raft and the tree has to become six the distance between the tree tree will go here the distance between the tree and the raft horizontally must become how much six that is it is total time of total time of journey is two hours in two hours how much distance it will travel v into r into two where its speed is r right so this is given as six so from there you can get r equal to three now that is a straightforward question when i look from raft frame but when i look from ground frame it is going to be like you have to write two equations and you might have to solve right so this question was put here to show you the importance of 
shifting frames, how shifting frames will make things easy. Now, you can look at the second question. Again, uh, there is no single way to solve the question. Uh, whatever the way I solved is not the only way. And sometimes it need not be the easiest way also. Sometimes it will be the difficult way what I am solving. There may be easy ways. There is no single way. So, you don't have to decide that you can solve this question only this way. Now, the next question goes like, two particles, one and two, move with constant velocities V1 and V2 along two mutually perpendicular straight lines towards the intersection O. At, mom at moment t equal to zero, the particles are located at distance L1 and L2 from point O. How soon the distance between the particles will become smallest and what is it equal to and stuff, right? So, basically, this is the given information. There are two particles which are going towards O. This is going towards O, this is going towards O, the speed is V1, the speed is V2 and this distance is L1, this distance is L2. This is given in the question. Now, you need to find, okay, the distance between them when it will become minimum, when it will become minimum. <coughs> okay, can be solved in many ways. Uh, generally, there will be differentiation way also. You will be fi you will be finding the distance between them as a function of time and you will be seeing like when it will become minimum. But I am trying to see the other way. I will shift, yeah, whenever there are, <coughs> if you see here, there are two objects moving. Whenever there are two objects moving, it's difficult for us to concentrate. We can concentrate better only if one object is moving. So that is the reason I am trying to, if, if you look in the previous question also, raft and boat were moving. So I am trying to make, I am trying to observe from raft them so that boat velocity will be easy for me to understand and stuff. Now in this particular question, two things are moving. Again, it is difficult for me to concentrate. So I will be observing from one point so i'll be i'll be observing from this reference frame if i observe from this reference frame this point will have extra velocity v1 in this direction so resultant of these two will be somewhere in this direction right somewhere in this direction now if with respect to when, when i observe from this point this one will be moving along this direction so when this is moving along this direction what is the minimum distance the minimum distance will happen when you drop perpendicular this is the minimum distance position right this distance is more than that this distance is more than that so this is the minimum distance position now there is some bad math here so i'm not going to explain it but what i am trying to say is observe from one point then the other point you will be feeling like it is moving with constant velocity along some line drop a perpendicular and that is going to be the minimum distance now the next question goes like oh, from point a Located on highway, uh, one has to get by car as soon as possible to point B located in the field at a distance L from the highway. It is known that car moves in field n times slower than the highway. n times slower than the highway. At what distance from D, one must turn off the highway. So they are asking to find this distance. At what distance uh, from D, you need to turn into the field and go so that this time taken will be minimum of all. So Whenever they ask minimum, what we will be doing generally in physics will be tending to go with differentiation only. Though there are many other principles in math, you will be learning like AM is greater than or equal to GM and parabola, whatever it is. So anyway, uh, like final go to method is differentiation. Differentiation has to work anywhere. Now, let me say the distance between A and D is small d and this distance is x. This is what I need to find. Now the speed in the highway is v. The speed here is v by eta, v by eta. Now, what is the time from here to here? This distance is d minus x and its speed is v. So, time time of travel from here to here is d minus x by v. Now, this distance is x, this distance is l. So, this distance is root of l square plus x square. And what is the speed? v by n, v by eta. So, what is the time taken? Time taken is distance by its speed in that line, right? So, this is the total time. Now, I have to make total time minimum. So, how that how we'll be knowing like when it will be minimum the only variable here is x so we'll try to differentiate it and we'll make it equal to zero to c for what value of x t will become minimum right so this is the equation we got now i am trying to see for what value of x uh, t will become minimum so when i differentiate this this is constant this is x differentiation is one so this differentiation is this much times this much one by two root times of 2 root 2 times of l square plus x square into again differentiation of this one is 2x that is equal to 0 so when you solve it you will be getting x equal to l by root eta square minus 1 now the same thing we could have done the other way also because we know light will take the quickest path so angle of instance equal to angle of reflection we can apply but here we can we'll be going with refraction thing because it looks similar to refraction now what will happen if you send a ray grazing like it will be coming in coming into the other medium with 
critical angle, right? The other way of saying it is, what will happen if you send a ray at critical angle? It will be going, grazing the surface, right? Yeah, ray in the sense, beam must be there. We, we are talking about beam, some some small, oh, small, small cross-section area beam. So, how we can understand this is, if, a, if light source is there, if light source is there, then when you send it at critical angle, then it will be grazing along the surface. Now, that is what I will be going to apply. Mu sine theta, mu in field sine theta equal to mu in highway sine 90. Now, how is mu defined? Speed of light by, uh, like here you can't take speed of light, we will be taking some constant. K by velocity in highway. K, uh, C by, uh, yeah, K by speed in field. So, from there C and C will be getting cancelled, you will be getting sin theta equal to 1 by eta. So, if sin theta is 1 by eta, then uh, I can make a triangle so that I can use whatever information I need. So, what I got? I got theta. So, I can use tan theta in this triangle to get this one. Tan theta equal to x by L. Tan theta equal to x by L. But what is tan theta from here? Tan theta from here is 1 by eta square minus root of eta square minus 1. So, from there you will be getting the required answer. So, the takeaway thing from here is, uh, if you want to find minimum time path, Maybe sometimes you can try to think from light point of view, like a reflection or refraction. Maybe sometimes even more than that. The next question about, and I think this is a regular question which must be there in your notes. So you can refer your notes if you, if you don't understand what I'm talking about. A boat moves relative to water with a velocity two times less than river flow. That is boat speed is less than river. So drift can't be zero. So at what angle to stream direction must the boat move to minimize the drift? Drift can't be zero. The reason is if river is flowing with V, man can only swim with V by 2 or boat can only come with V by 2. So effectively even if he tries his best, even if the boat tries its best, still it will be moving forward. So drift can't become zero. That is one thing you need to understand. Now how to make the drift minimum? Now the thing is, let me say. This is river, this is river flow direction, this river flow direction and the speed of river is V. Speed of river is V. Now what will add up to boat speed? Its own speed, its natural speed plus river will try to push it. That is velocity of river plus velocity of boat with respect to river. Right? So these are the two things which will be affecting the boat speed from ground frame. Right? So I need to add two vectors. Those two vectors are velocity of river and velocity of the boat with respect to river right now this is constant in direction and constant in magnitude now i have option now the boat guy has option he can go in infinite number of ways he can try this way 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 right but out of all these possible ways out of all these possible ways which one he will be choosing to minimize the drift which one he will be choosing to minimize the drift now suppose now suppose he chooses to go in this direction, he ch chooses to go in this direction, then what will happen? Effective velocity will be along this direction. If effective velocity is along this direction, then he will be, tra effectively he will be traveling along this direction, right? So if he tries to go this way, then effectively he will be going along this way. If he tries to go, uh, yeah, uh, this is not possible, right? So if he tries to go here, if he tries to go this way, if he tries to go this way, still he will be reaching somewhere here. So out of all these possibilities, the minimum drift case is, when the resultant will become a tangent right resultant will become a tangent if you if the resultant is this one it is not a tangent so when resultant becomes tangent you can see the drift is going to be minimum out of all the lines which is passing through the circle this is going to be the minimum drift case minimum drift case so v and v by 2 so this is the minimum drift case from this triangle you can find this angle is 30 this angle is 60 so with respect to river flow the angle by the person is 120 right so this must be there in your notes. I don't know how you will be solving it, but generally, oh, everyone, I mean, I also, oh, everyone tries to teach it by differentiation because that's how you will be learning things first in the first in, in the very basic place, right? Now, the next question, I'm not going to do the question. It's just to show how to put the first equation in figure. A small body is thrown at an angle oh, to the horizontal with initial velocity v0. Neglecting the air drag, so you need to find what is the displacement of the body as a function of time. Displacement of the body as a function of time is u bar into t plus half into a bar into t square. A bar here is g bar. Right? So how to put that is now this is the projectile. 
this is the projectile and this is the initial velocity direction but if i talk about this particular point displacement is this now but what we have seen we have seen displacement can be written as summation of two two terms one is u bar into t the other one is half g bar into t square now we will see how to write that now this is u bar direction so u bar into t will be this vector u bar into t will be this vector this is g bar direction so half g bar into t square will be this direction so summation of these two vectors will give me displacement will give me displacement that's how you can see that equation so that's the reason i have put the question here now based on that we can we can try to solve one simple question from standard half gt square expression of free fall from rest we see that if the falling time is doubled the falling distance is uh, quadrupled right so when time becomes uh, two two times then the distance will become four times using this fact you need to find the ratio of height of top of projectile that is this point to the height where the projectile would have been if gravity is turned off. If gravity is not there, it will be going along this direction forever, right? So that's what they are asking. So let us try to do this way. So if you want to, now you know, you know the time taken till A is, if it is T, then time taken till the end point is 2T. This is half time, this is full time, right? That, that you must be knowing anyway. So. Displacement of this point I can write as u bar into t plus half g bar into t square. Now similarly displacement of this point I can write it as u bar into 2t. When compared to that one this time is twice. Plus this is half g into 2t whole square which is 4t square. From there you can see this distance if it is d then this distance will be 4d. Right. Now you need to concentrate on that part. Now if this distance is this distance is d then this distance is going to be 4d because half g t square and half g into 4 t square now but if you look at these two triangles if you look at these two triangles those two triangles are similar triangles right all the three angles are equal this angle is equal to this angle one is 90 and initial angle is same so then the ratios must be same but you can see this length is half of this length or you can see the lengths are becoming twice so if lengths are becoming twice then this length must be half of this length right from there you can see this is d that is okay uh, so yeah this is 4d so if this is 4d then this total has to be half of it which is 2d if this total is 2d then this is d so this is d this is d they are asking the ratio of d to 2d d to 2d right so it will be 1 is to 2 1 is to 2 and there is no single way to solve the question there must be other ways also you can figure it out by yourself the next question goes like a ball projected vertically upwards with a velocity 20 returns back on the ground with a velocity 16. If air resistance is proportional to the speed of the ball, find the air time of the ball. Acceleration of free fall, you can take it as 10. So, the general tendency I have is to go by the uh, base how we will be learning stuff. So, we will be throwing with some initial velocity u1. Let me say it will be coming with velocity u2 right so this is given in the question this value is also given in the question now we need to find answer in terms of u1 and u2 and g now what will happen when it is going upwards at some random moment the speed is v but acceleration due to gravity is downwards at the same time uh, acceleration due to resistance is also downwards these two are accelerations suppose now finally it will become zero thereafter it will start coming down while coming down when its speed is some v. sorry so it acceleration due to gravity will be downwards acceler acceleration due to friction will be upwards air resistance will be upwards right so this is how it looks now i'll try to put it in this form uh, in equation form that the rate at which this is changing uh, this is reducing is equal to this right so the rate at which velocity is changing will be equal to acceleration now it is going to reduce because the directions are opposite so i put the rate at which v is reducing is equal to g plus kv but if i took in this case the rate at which this is increasing is equal to g minus kv the rate at which this is increasing equal to g minus kv now what i'll be doing is i'll be integrating because i need time right i, I am trying to see like after how much time its velocity will become zero that i got this much similarly after how much time its velocity will become u2 when i selected that it turned out to be this much but what i need i need both the times i need this t1 plus this t2 so when i added them i got something like this t1 plus t2 t1 plus t2 when i added i got something like this but k is some variable what i assumed so that is coming into picture i have to avoid that so for that what i used is this didn't come it this will come later like 
I got only till here. Now I need to show that this will be equal to this. So for that what I did is I looked at the figure. I can see this distance traveled equal to this distance traveled. So I am going to use that logic. So in the first figure I will be calculating what is the distance traveled. In the second figure I will be calculating what is the distance traveled. So these are the two same two equations we have written. But we can write it as Vdv by ds and we can integrate. We can integrate and I saw what is the displacement in the first case. It is this much. So what is the displacement? I mean what is the distance traveled in the second case? k into s will be this much but both must be equal so when i equate those two i calculated distance traveled in both the cases and i equated them when i equated them i understood this term is going to be u1 plus u2 by g this this is the term same term we, what we got in time so this term is going to be u1 plus u2 by g now you can see like that is turning out to be much simpler equation so this lengthy way must not be the way i mean there must be some other easy way most of the times most of the times if the answer looks pretty simple there must be some simpler way to solve the question or to understand it so what i am going to do here is till here it's the same thing till writing writing this till writing this these two equations it's the same thing but now instead of bringing uh, one variable to one side another variable to other side what i am doing is i am trying to take this dt and i can int i am trying to integrate so this is change in speed this is g is constant so i can take integral dt now this is k into v dt integral v integral v dt integral v dt is going to be the distance traveled there right so i am calling it as s i am calling it as s this, this is t1 now this is going to be u1 now similarly when i do it here i will be getting g t2 minus ks is equal to u2 but what is the thing i don't know i don't know k and s so i am trying to eliminate them so how i can do them i can add both of the equations then i will be getting u1 plus u2 equal to g into t1 plus t2 so t1 plus t2 equal to u1 plus u2 by g right so i can see like they are getting cancelled so maybe next time if someone asks me i can go with this approach because i know they will be getting cancelled so i will be trying to club both the equations and, and i can write only single equation that i can do it by putting in vector form previously i put it in scalar form because while going upwards things are different things are behaving different for me while going downwards things are behaving different for me when i put it in scalar form so i am going to put it in vector form mg bar minus kv bar equal to m into a bar net force equal to mass times of acceleration now i'll be integrating with respect to t on on all sides then integral v dt integral v dt is turning out to be like that is the displacement that is it is going up and it is coming down so it is turning out to be zero integral t will turn out to be total time of flight now integral a bar dt will turn out to be change in velocity in vector form right so from there you can get t equal to v plus u by g you now from where i got this i got the idea like displacement is going to get cancelled so i am trying to club them and make it into some other thing so it's like first i did by natural way I got it lengthy but the answer turned out to be simple so there must be some other simpler way so while trying to do that simpler way I understood like there are two equations and displacement is getting cancelled so how to make it more simpler when you try to club both the equations right so that's what happens here now every time every time you get this result you can cross check with the well known results what you have right if the initial velocity and final velocity are same that is when there is no air resistance total time of flight is 2u by g right the next question goes like three points are located at the vertices of equilateral triangle whose side equals a they all start moving simultaneously with velocity v in modulus with the first point heading continuously towards the second and second one towards third and third one towards first how soon will the points converge now what does the question say the question say there are three points like this this is going towards b this is going towards c this is going towards a now this is happening con continuously now by the time a reaches here c c must have reached here now c will be pointing in this direction now by the time a reaches here c will be reaching here c will be reaching here and it will be pointing along this direction so if i if i want to show the immediate figure if this is the initial figure the immediate figure will be c will be going here a will be going here a will be going here and b will be going here now still they will be making the same i mean still they will be making equilateral triangle but the size became less now in the next moment it looks like this triangle now you can see the different color triangle so 
but you know finally they have to meet at centroid only because of the symmetry that you can understand so this a will be following this curved path this b will be following this curved path this c will be following this curved path but at any moment if you take the picture it looks like equilateral triangle only so what i'm going to do is i'm taking i'm going to take two equilateral triangles and i am trying to show you something i have taken two equilateral triangles that is this okay i don't know which color you will be seeing it it kind of it's kind of red and this is kind of blue i'm going to take those two triangles now when i take red triangle i can show you like this speed is v this speed is v this speed is v now similarly here this speed is v this speed is v this speed is v now okay so what i am trying to see is i am trying to see what is the rate at which this length is reducing now this is trying to go with v this is trying to come with v by 2 so at what rate the length is going to reduce this length is going to reduce at a rate of v plus v by 2 that is 3 v by 2 you can see here also that length is getting reduced at a rate of v plus v by 2 so at any instant at any instant it's not only one instant at any instant when you try to see at what rate the length between these two points is getting reduced it is going going to reduce at rate 3 v by 2 3 v by 2 so once you know that then you can see it's like just a line is shrinking at a rate of 3 v by 2 so after how much time it will become zero length so the the line is shrinking at a rate of 3 v by 2 so after how much time it will become zero length that is total length by the rate at which it is shrinking or distance traveled by speed right now we can look at the same thing in the other way now again i am taking the two triangles and i am trying to show the other point now this one this one has to reach at the centroid now centroid will be remaining same for all the triangles centroid will be remaining same for all the triangles which is this so now i know this point has to reach here now i'll be trying to see what is its velocity along this line towards centroid what is its velocity along centroid or at what rate this line is getting reduced at what rate the length between b this is b right yeah at what rate the length between b and o is getting reduced if i see here it is b cos 30 if i see here again again it is b cos 30 so again it's not in one triangle at every instant it's not in one instant it's every instant at every instant the length between or the line joining between b and o is going to reduce at a rate of v cos 30 which is v root 3 by 2 v root 3 by 2 so this length is going to reduce at a rate of v root 3 by 2 but what is this length this length is 2 by 3 times of height right so that length is going to reduce at rate of v cos 30 which is v root 3 by 2 so total length by the rate at which it is reducing is will give us time right so again there must yeah, you can see whatever is comfortable for you you can take it now the next question goes like point a moves uniformly with a velocity v so that vector v is continuously aimed at point b which in turn moves rectilinearly and uniformly with a velocity u which is less than v at the initial moment of time v bar is perpendicular to u bar and the points are separated by distance l how soon the points will converge so okay uh, so uh, there are many things you just listen step by step so there is point a here there is point b here they said point b is having velocity u and point a is having velocity v now a will be always aiming towards b so right now it will be aiming towards b now in the later moment when it goes here a will be coming here now it will be pointing in this direction now when similarly when b goes here a will be somewhere here so it will be pointing in this direction so at some random moment at some random moment when i draw the figure it looks like when the point a is here point b is here b is moving with speed u in this direction in the same constant direction but a will be always aiming towards b so a will be aiming this way now i am taking like with respect to horizontal that angle is theta that angle is theta now our general tendency is to write equations along x axis and y axis so let me see what is the effective velocity along x axis or y axis and stuff so along the along the motion of b uh, so i am trying to if you look at the equation i am trying to write along the motion of b along the motion of b uh, what is the relative velocity relative velocity this velocity is u but what is this velocity this velocity is v cos theta v cos theta so what is the relative velocity relative velocity is u minus v cos theta or i can say if they are meeting the distance traveled by this must be equal to the distance traveled by this along horizontal direction or 
this is the relative velocity along horizontal direction at this moment that is v minus u cos theta v i mean u u minus v cos theta because if you see this one you can resolve it into two components v cos theta and v sin theta so when i observe from this point when i observe from this point or you can see like if this is moving with v cos theta this is moving with u then the relative velocity is u minus v cos theta so relative velocity along x axis if i call this as x axis relative velocity along x axis into dt will give me small displacement when i integrate it i must be getting the total displacement but what is what must be the total relative displacement along x axis initially both are along same x coordinate so finally also they are along the same x coordinate if they are meeting so total displacement has to be zero so total displacement along x axis has to be zero similarly you can write for y axis but that's not going to help so i am not going to write it so from here i'll be getting one equation but i am getting like integral cos theta dt integral cos theta dt now the, there is a problem that theta is going to change but i don't know how it is going to change so it's hard for me to evaluate this integral without knowing how theta is varying with time so anyway let me put it here i will try to get some more equation which includes this term and i'll try to cancel it now how to get one more term including cos theta now that can't happen if i write vertical direction because that is going to be v sin theta v sin theta won't be going to help me so i am not going to write it now this symbol represents sin theta this symbol represents cos theta if you didn't notice it now i need to bring cos theta term once more that i can do if i write the equation along the line joining if i write the equation along the line joining this velocity is v this velocity is u cos theta u cos theta so the relative velocity is v minus u cos theta obviously v has to be more because that length is reducing right so relative velocity is v minus u cos theta so what is the what is the length that will be decreasing in small time so velocity along the line joining is v minus u cos theta so at what rate it is reducing v minus u cos theta so in a small time how much that length will reduce v minus u cos theta into dt so this is the length it will be reducing in small time so if i integrate i will be getting what is the total length which reduced right so initially how much it was initially the distance between them is l along the line joining finally it is zero finally it is zero at some random moment we are writing this so what is the total distance that is reducing along the line joining it is l so the rate at which the rate at which that length l is reducing is this much so when i integrate i will be getting this result right so from here again i will be getting integral cos theta dt so i got integral cos theta dt here integral cos theta dt here so i will be trying to eliminate that term and i will be getting the required result so what we did here along x axis we wrote the equation or along y axis also, also also we could have written but it's not going to help much so i am trying to write one equation in the first place and try to eliminate the unnecessary unknown by writing some other similar equation so the better way of saying it is i wrote one equation along the direction of b and i wrote one other equation along the direction of motion of a right yeah this is not a straightforward question it's kind of unique question so the next question goes like point lock objects are thrown with initial spe initial speed v not in various directions from the top of the tower if air resistance is negligible what is the maximum distance from the foot of the tower that they can reach so the question goes like you are throwing some projectile from height h so what is this maximum distance what is this maximum distance again oh, you can get it by differentiation method which i am not going to do i am trying to show you some other thing in much easier way so it is under constant acceleration that we know constant acceleration that we know so when something is at constant acceleration i can say that acceleration can be given by final velocity minus initial velocity by time taken right that that i can do if it is constant acceleration or average acceleration average acceleration will be same as acceleration at any point because it is constant acceleration so average acceleration equal to change in velocity by time taken it's a total time of flight is t now similarly average average velocity into time taken equal to displacement when it is constant acceleration this i can write for constant acceleration so these are the two terms which i am writing first one is average acceleration equal to change in velocity by time taken now uh, displacement equal to average velocity times time taken if it is constant acceleration now those two equations i am trying to take the dot product if i take the dot product of those two equations v1 bar v1 bar minus v0 bar by t dot v0 plus v0 bar plus v1 bar by 2 into t 
so the t in this t will get cancelled so equal to g bar into r bar now when you do cross dot product you will be getting v1 square minus v0 square that uh, minus plus v1 v0 bar v1 uh, yeah dot product and minus v0 v1 will be getting cancelled so finally you will be ending this you will be ending up this one with this and g bar dot r bar g bar dot r bar that is this is r bar this is g bar so you need g bar dot r bar what does it mean by g bar dot r bar and that is g into displacement of this i mean uh, projection of this one along the direction of g so projection of this one along the direction of g is this much which is h g into h so g bar dot r bar will turn out to be g into h that's that looks like kinematics equation or conservation of energy equation from here what i can say from here i can say v naught is a given value h is a fixed value given value so v1 is also going to be fixed value that i could have said earlier also final speed we know by energy conservation also that we can see from here final speed is a fixed value if h is a fixed value now i'm going to take instead of dot product i'm going to take cross product when i take cross product v1 bar cross v bar is 0 v1 bar cross v1 bar is 0 v0 bar cross v0 bar is 0 so the other term is v1 bar cross v0 bar and the other one is minus v0 bar cross v1 bar so anyway this is a bar cross b bar and this b bar cross a bar so b bar cross a bar is minus of a bar cross b bar so i can write this summation as two times of v1 bar cross v0 but that two and this two will be getting cancelled now what about the right hand side right hand side it is g bar cross r bar now how to find g bar cross r bar now you need to see what is the projection of r perpendicular or you can see if this is g bar direction g bar into r bar that is g into r into sin theta this is r cos theta now this is r sin theta this is r sin theta so g bar cross r bar magnitude wise will turn out to be g into this perpendicular distance which is the range what we are going to call now this we have to maximize that let me call that distance as d so g bar cross r bar magnitude wise will turn out to be g into d magnitude wise this will turn out to be g into d magnitude wise this one will be v1 bar cross v0 bar magnitude and what is this v1 into v0 into sine of angle between them now what we have seen earlier v0 is a fixed value v0 is a given value for a given v0 and given h v1 is also fixed value so these two are constants so a bar is constant b bar is constant so what will be a bar cross b bar maximum that will be a b sin theta sin theta has to be maximum that is this maximum value will happen when they are perpendicular so what is the maximum value of this when v1 bar will be perpendicular to v0 bar or what is the maximum value of this it is v0 into v1 so if this maximum value is v0 into v1 then maximum value of d will be v0 into v1 by g that is the maximum distance but what is v1 v1 we found by energy conservation or this equation so we can find v1 from here and we can substitute so this is going to be the maximum range now you can cross check with your well known result if h is 0 if h is 0 it will be a normal projectile in normal projectile if h is 0 then so turn out to be v0 into v0 by g v0 square by g that is the maximum range in normal projectile yes and you can see initial velocity will be making angle 45 degrees with horizontal final velocity also will be making 45 degrees with horizontal they will be perpendicular to each other so this one also will be getting valid in normal projectile right Now the next question goes like a fountain consists of a small hem uh, hemispherical rose or sprayer which lies on surface of water in a basin as illustrated in the figure. The rose uh, has many evenly distributed small holes in it through which the water spurts at the uh, same speed, same speed in all directions. So what is the shape of the water bell formed by the jets? So this is going to be the figure. I mean this is only two dimensional figure but when you rotate it you will be getting three dimensional figure that is what they are going to talk but we are trying to see uh, what is the shape of this two dimensional structure now there will be many projectiles if you fire yeah if the water is going vertically upwards it will be reaching some height and it will be falling this way so at some angle it will be falling this way this way this way now when you try to club when you try to see like under what region this entire uh, all the water drops are staying now that that equation they are asking that equation they are asking so what we are going to do is we will try to see like what we know for any projectile for any projectile if initial speed is fixed this cos theta is varying cos theta is varying it is 90 for 1 uh, theta is 90 for 1 thing 45 for 1 0 for 1 so x coordinate will be given by u cos theta into t y coordinate will be given by u sin theta into t minus half gt square now i don't need time because i need equation so i am trying to eliminate time so from here i will be finding time as x y u cos theta and i will be substituting it here 
time I substituted as x by u cos theta. So finally, I will be getting tan theta here. Now this one I will be getting secant square. Secant square I am writing it as 1 plus tan square so that I can modify it into single equation in terms of tan square. In terms of tan square. Why I am doing this is I need to find y and x relation for that curve. So I am trying to see what are the possible values of theta. Or This is a quadratic in tan theta. So if it has to have some roots, real roots, then discriminant has to be greater than or equal to 0. Right? B square minus 4ac. B square minus 4ac has to be greater than or equal to 0. From there, I can see y has to be less than or equal to this. y has to be less than or equal to that. That is parabola. So basically, this shape is going to be parabola and that shape will be given by y equal to u square by 2g minus gx square by 2u square. 2 u square. Now, you can see it the other way also. So that boundary condition is v is equal to v is equal to right so when x is 0 when x is 0 uh, then y has to be u square by 2g u square by 2g right so the meaning is this point when this is x equal to 0 point right so when x equal to 0 the meaning is you are throwing it vertically upwards when you throw it vertically upwards y has to be u square by 2g now for y is 0 for y is 0 then x, x has to be how much x has to be u square by u square by g so when y is 0 x has to be u square by g the meaning is this point maximum range is u square by g yes so those two things are getting valid so once you know the result it is going to be parabola you can get it back much quickly because you know y equal to a x square plus b form it is and you know when x equal to 0 y has to be y has to be u square by 2g and when y is 0 x has to be u square by g now these two are the results we know so we can from there i can see like when x is 0 y will become b which is u square by 2g so b is u square by 2g now i know b value now when y equal to 0 a is a is a minus b by x square so x is this much so minus b by x square is this much so finally you will be getting this one so a value you know b value you know when you put it back you will be getting the equation what you know already so sometimes we do this we try to put everything on math we'll get the result we try to analyze the result so that we can recreate the equation back much easily. Now the next question. A tree trunk of diameter 20 cm lies in horizontal field. A lazy grasshopper wants to jump over the trunk. Find the minimum takeoff speed of grasshopper that will be sufficient enough. Now. Okay, I am going with the generalized figure. It's like, let me say the projectile is this way and this is the tree trunk of radius r. Now the projectile, let me say it is going this way. Now let me say it is making an angle beta here. So if this is beta, then this will also be going to be beta. This is beta, this is 90 minus beta. So this is going to be beta. Now I can see a projectile from here to here also. If the initial speed is V1 and the speed here is V2, now I can see projectile from here to here. What is the range of this projectile? Range of this projectile is, this is R. So this is going to be R sine beta. This is going to be R sine beta. I can see the right angle triangle here, right? So R sin beta, R sin beta. So the range is 2R sin beta. But I know the range formula. Or if I don't know also, I can write horizontal speed into total time taken. Horizontal speed into time taken from here to here will give me range in projectile. Now that will be how much mathematically here? 2R sin beta. That's the first equation. So when I modify it, I'll be getting this one. But I'll come back to this later. So this is the first equation. Now that I can see from the figure, I, as I can see projector from here to here, I have written that equation assuming that it is going to be useful. I mean, I know how to do it. So I can't really convince you. So you have to convince yourself. Now what I, what I try to do here, I try to find V2, V2 as a function of beta, V2 as a function of beta. But what I need, I need V1 as a function of beta, V1 as a function of beta, right? So how, how I can do that? I can use energy conservation from here to here or you can use your kinematics principles. So half mv square equal to half mv2 square plus mg into this height, which is r plus r cos beta. So half mv1 square initial kinetic energy equal to final kinetic energy plus final potential energy, mg into r plus r cos beta. Now what is, what is v2 square? v2 square is r into g by cos beta, which I substituted which I substituted back here. Now you can see it is a function of cos. Now this cos beta I have written like this. Now you can see this is a function of cos. Now you need to see when this will become maximum. For that you can use differentiation or you can use am is greater than or equal to gm, whatever it is. So I use am greater than or equal to g here. From the here I can see minimum value of cos plus one by two cos must be root two. That will happen when that beta is 45 degrees. 
So when I substitute that root, oh, this and this minimum value has to be root two. So you'll be getting approximately how much this two into one plus root two, which is approximately four point eight. Now why have why I have put this value is I'm going to show later, maybe in in circular motion. I'll show you. We must not assume that it will be crossing at this point. Will be uh, because. If it has to cross at this point, of, uh, that must be the topmost point of the projectile. For that, I will be showing you that you need at least root 5 gr, which is more than this case. In this case, we got root 4.8 gr. But if you assume that it has to touch at point E, that is the topmost point of that tree trunk, then its speed, its minimum speed, initial speed has to be root 5 gr. Now, for the basics, I can show you that at the topmost point. If it is if it is crossing at the topmost point, then the radius car, radius of curvature of parabola and uh, this circle will be same. That is equal to r. So use you can use like centripetal acceleration equal to v square by r, right? So I can use that centripetal acceler centripetal force equal to m v square by r. So from there I will be getting what is the speed at the topmost point r g. I mean root r g. Thereafter I can use energy conservation and when I do it. I will be getting root of 5 gr. Now, what is root 5 gr? Root 5 gr is the speed needed for you to project such that it will be touching the topmost point and going and hitting the ground. But what is the question we need here? The very first question I asked, it is like what must be the minimum speed so that it will be crossing this tree trunk, right? 